Hello and welcome to our special edition. I'm Anastasia Lavrina and now we will talk about the last events around Armenia, Azerbaijan, Nagorno Karabakh conflict. My guest is uh, Efraim Sne, Israel politician, former deputy defense minister. Mr. Sne, hello and welcome to our special edition. Good evening, madam. So let's discuss the last event. Unfortunately, what we saw just some time ago, Armenian armed forces again target the civilians. We saw that again the civilian population in uh, Barda district of Azerbaijan uh, were attacked by the Armenian armed forces. How can you comment about the uh, current situation around Armenia, Azerbaijan, Nagorno Karabakh conflict and the Armenian violation of the all ceasefires? agreements. At first, I would like, of course, to convey my condolences to the families who lost their dear ones in this attack and, and I wish a very quick recovery to those who were wounded, but the, the solution is to stop the violence and to reach agreement which will respect the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. Definitely. Thank you very much for your words and a separate thanks to the Israeli government, to the Israeli people who support Azerbaijan since the period of all this conflict last and always Israel supports the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. Please tell us more about the position of Israel and what else can be done to make the conflict to be resolved as soon as possible. Uh, look, we have to remember the most important thing. We are allies. Israel and Azerbaijan have alliance between them, strategic alliance. It's not as some people try to pose it as trade of oil and arms. Not. It's much deeper than that. And I was, I have the privilege to establish the, the, the fundaments of this alliance in 90, December 93 with the late uh, founding father of modern Azerbaijan, Gaidar Aliyev. And what is, what is the basis of this alliance? We are not just friends. There is historical roots to this friendship. We cannot forget that more than 300,000 citizens of Azerbaijan died in the war against Hitler. They are played a very crucial role in the saving, not only of the mankind, but of the Jewish people. And we don't forget it. Second, in Azerbaijan there was never anti-Semitism like in other Soviet republics. So we have very, very deep background of friendship and cooperation and gratitude to, to the Azeri people for what they did in the great, uh, in the great war. But beyond that, this is about the past. I would like to speak about the present and the future. The aspiration and I may say the ambition of Azerbaijan is to be secular, independent, secular, independent, strong, enlightened, modern country. And the neighbors of Azerbaijan don't share fully this aspiration of the Azerbaijani. We do. We support the aspiration of the Azerbaijani people to live in a modern, self-sustaining, independent, prosperous country. The Caspian area, the South Kafkaz, is in the greater strategic space of Israel. It is not for us Antarctica. It is in the strategic environment of Israel and we want such that such Azerbaijan will be strong and independent. And this is our interest and also our sympathy in the heart. 
We totally agree with your point and very thankful for this uh, explanation, brief uh, also introduction to the history because we really see how our two countries, Israel and Azerbaijan, always support each other. And you rightly mentioned that in Azerbaijan there has never been any kind of anti-Semitism. We uh, remember Holocaust. We have never uh, tried to, let's say, forget about this uh, days which also were very bloody for the Israel people as well as in Israel always the people remember Hojali the genocide which happened with Azerbaijani people because of the Armenian armed forces who uh, forcibly uh, displaced the big amount of people and also killed the innocent civilians for this is a separate tanks I also would like to know your opinion about these Armenian attempts to blame Israel for selling the weapons to Azerbaijan. It seems very funny from one side, but still there are such kind of attempts because they also bring this before the court. The court denies this, but there were such kind of an attempt. And the country which heroized the Nazism, I'm now talking about the Gargin there. This is quite known fact about the Armenian internal policy. This country is talking about the genocide against the Armenians, which is being uh, implemented by the Azerbaijan and saying that Israel is supporting Azerbaijan in doing that. How you can comment on that? Is it really something the Armenians think the international community can believe in? Nastasia, today we are living in a world that fake news is the normative news. And of course it's a falsification. We are victims of genocides. We are not supporters of genocide, the Jewish people. And so it is senseless. It's senseless even to react on, on this kind of uh, accusation. Of course, we, we provide uh, Azerbaijan with, uh, uh, with arms, with good arms, with sophisticated arms, with the best that our industry uh, is doing, and we do not hide it. On the contrary, and publicly, President Ilham Aliyev said Israel sold to us uh, arms and defense systems in five billion dollars. It's not a secret. We are not uh, hiding it. On the contrary, we are proud of it. Indeed, you are totally. We are, we are also agree with this uh, point uh, because Azerbaijan has never hide the partner country whose providing the weapons, actually selling the weapons also to Azerbaijan. And in this military cooperation between Israel and Azerbaijan is at the highest level. And we do not hide this information. But unfortunately, Armenian government is trying to pursue the international community that it is so-called aggressive policy of Azerbaijan and etc. But we are also likely to see that not all the uh, international, the political leaders, the experts and etc. And also the media representative trust and believe in this fake information, fake news. Also, you are as a uh, military expert. I would like to know your opinion about the success of Azerbaijani army. As for uh, today, we know that it's already one month since the start of the conflict escalation and until today, up to now, uh, we know that four cities, three settlements and 165 villages have been successfully liberated by the Azerbaijani armed forces from the Armenian occupants. So we also know that at the moment, the borders between Azerbaijan and Iran is fully under control of Azerbaijani army. What do you think about the success of Azerbaijani army? And probably there are some predictions already can be said about the future of this movement. In order to answer you, allow me to go back to the comment of the international community. Yes, please. What the international community did for all those 25, 26 years to bring the conflict to a peaceful solution. Nothing. Talks and talks and talks, but not an active action to put the conflict in the end through so negotiations. Now, when the international community failed to bring about peaceful negotiated agreement, then Azerbaijan is doing what they can to bring back their, uh, their territories. No one can blame them for that. And I would like, uh, you spoke about the Israeli angle of this conflict. Look, 
In 67, 1967, Israel conquered the Sinai Peninsula in the war with Egypt, the largest and the most important Arab state. The area, the territory of Sinai Peninsula was three times bigger than the territory of tiny Israel. And this was in 67. In uh, 79, Israel gave back all the territory back to Egypt in the framework of peace agreement. We didn't keep one inch of Sinai, we gave everything to, to Egypt. Why? Because we made peace agreement. So this is the formula which the international community enshrined in the Security Council Resolution 242, you don't acquire territory by military force. And the formula is territory for peace. What we did in 79, territory for peace. The Egyptians made peace with us. Here, the same rule applies to, to Armenia and Azerbaijan. Territory is for peace. This is the solution. And no doubt that 20% of the Azerbaijani territory was, was conquered in war. So that's time to resolve it in a negotiated uh, manner. Indeed, what, what Azerbaijani government uh, has been saying since the beginning of this escalation, saying that we do not need anyone's territory, we do not take Armenian territory. What we are wa doing now, we are liberating our historical lands in accordance with the international law and four UN Security Council resolutions. And what is really funny now to see, there were four UN Security mm -hmm. resolutions passed in 1993, two of which Azerbaijan has already implemented by forces. And the full international community, OEC Minsk Group, were not able to do it for about 30 years. So let's say Azerbaijan is doing what had to be done by the international community, by its own forces, and we hope that the international community will understand us. Also, I would like to know your opinion about the role of the United States. We also know that the United States is a close partner for the Israel, and the United States is one of the co-chair of the OEC Minsk Group. We had the recent meetings of the foreign ministers of Armenia and Azerbaijan with the Secretary of State of the United States, Pompeo, Mike Pompeo, where they also agreed about humanitarian ceasefire, which unfortunately also had been violated by the Armenian side. How do you think, if the United States, considering their internal situation with the presidential elections 2020, can take more decisive role in this conflict resolution process? At the end, these are the two parties that have to, to, to make the agreement. The international powers can support, can assist. They cannot replace the, 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 the two fighting sides. So if, and you know, to be a superpower, it's also responsibility. It's not only position of power, it's also responsibility. So both Russia and United States should help to bring about peaceful solution to the conflict under the formula of territory for peace. Yes. This is what I do, that I do expect of these two superpowers. And my final question to you about the role of the Armenian lobby groups and also diaspora organization, which they're trying to use first to promote the fake news, second to destabilize the situation in different countries, including the Israel, because we saw some news where the uh, Armenian diaspora's representative are trying to destabilize the situation, uh, make any kind of demonstration on the street, and etc. So do you think that they may achieve any success in any countries? And if not, if there is any specific steps the official governments should take to make them down? Uh, I, I do not disparage or, or ignore the strengths of the Armenian lobby in America. Just to remind you that the famous Congress resolution 907 uh, for boycotting Azerbaijan and punishing Azerbaijan, it was it was achieved uh, through a pressure from, from this lobby. But at the end of the day, 
institutions of Congress, Senate, should decide according to logic and the good and the good interest of um, of their country, and not because what some lobby tell them to do this or do that. I I, I know very well what uh, what you are talking about, uh, but it's the time for the American people to decide. Yes, indeed. We hope that the justice will prevail and Azerbaijan will be able to liberate all its occupied lands but in the near future. With your comments on, on, on America, let me tell you one word from a position of a citizen of a small, of a small country. Small nations should de depend only to rely only on themselves. No one, w no one will solve their problems. They should do it themselves and rely on themselves. This is the lesson for all small nations, especially a nation which is such complex geopolitical situation as Azerbaijan. Totally agree with your point. Allow, allow me to, to quote myself uh, and don't consider me a megalomaniac by a uh, quoting myself, but once I told the late, the late president, Mr. President, you have wonderful geology, but terrible geography. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed, it's right. And that's why some experts and politicians every time asking the question, how Azerbaijan is able to be developed on such a highest progressive level, being able to implement so many economic and energy projects, considering the fact that this location, it's not very easy. But still, we are surviving and we wish all the best to our friendly nation, Israel. Thank you very much for your comments. You're most welcome and I wish you all the best in the world. Thank you. Just to remind you, watch special edition on CBC TV. My guest today is uh, Ephraim Sne, Israel politician, former deputy defense minister. And you used to talk about Armenia-Azerbaijan-Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. See you in the next edition.